I had done a video some time ago with my late friend Carlos where I was talking about some of the weirdest looking bottles in my collection and you know Moschino I think made the list a couple of times. Here we have a fragrance from many years ago, I think it was 2015 or 16, I don't quite remember. This one is called Fresh Couture. The perfumer is Alberto Morias, who's an amazing perfumer. I'll tell you if I think this is an amazing fragrance, so make sure to stay tuned. Before I begin today's episode and I give you my thoughts on Moschino Fresh Couture, there have been a few flankers to this fragrance and this seems to be a very fruity floral type of a scent, Elang Elang, Peony, there's raspberry, there's also Ambroxan and a lot of citrus in here as well. But before I begin the video, I do want to mention that if you're a fan of fragrance related content, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon and also give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. It would really mean a lot to me. So. Here we have a fragrance that's been around for almost a decade now, if I'm not mistaken, and the perfumer is Alberto Morias. He's done fragrances for Gucci, he has done fragrances for Giorgio Armani, Aqua de Jo being one of them. He's such an amazing perfumer, he even has his own brand called Misancier, and I am a huge fan of his work. So of course, looking at this fragrance, and it's in a very kitschy bottle, and there's bergamot and orange and, you know, Elang Elang, peony, there's raspberry, so, the impression is given that this is going to be a fruity floral type of a scent. There's a touch of patchouli, but a heavy dose of ambroxan. And of course, when you think of a Windex bottle, because that's pretty much what it is, you're thinking of something that has that sort of a cleaning product smell. And yes, many of these products, whether it's Mr. Clean or Windex or Fabuloso, they do contain fragrance. So I wonder if he stole a play from that playbook, so to speak, or if this one is gonna smell any different and something like something that the average person would wear despite the setting. I'm gonna give you my thoughts regarding the smell in just a moment. Let's start things off with a quick look at the presentation. Now, in the opening of this fragrance, you are going to get a lot of citrus. And it's bergamot, it's a few other citrus ingredients, but it just smells like citrus aroma chemicals. So citrol, citronellol, linalool. It just opens up bright, citrusy, but very nondescript. It's a very sort of a plain type of a citrus, bordering on boring. And in the opening, I'm not the biggest fan of the smell that the citrus here conveys. As a matter of fact, this reminded me of some classic, inexpensive women's perfume, and I can't quite put my finger on it or my nose on it, but it's something that I've smelled before so many times. But it does open up fresh, and it opens up in um, a likable way, I would say. And then you give this one a chance to settle down for a bit, and those fruity floral components start to come through. So the peony is there, it smells rather clean, the raspberry is not overly sweet, and you do have this heavy dose of ambroxan. So it's fresh, it's clean, it's citrusy, not much happening in the way of its floral personality, and also not much in, happening in the way of its fruity personality. I think all things considered, this one is so much more about the clean components, the citrus, the ambroxan, that it kind of missed the boat on that fruity floral thing that could have been happening in here. And it is happening, but to a very light degree. I think overall, this is a fragrance that is kind of on the overdone side of things. I've smelled this DNA before. This isn't the first time it's presenting itself in olfactory form. I've tried this in a number of fragrances. The citrus here leaves a lot to the imagination and I kind of wish that it were a little more floral or a little more fruity and at the end of the day you smell it and you're reminded of something that is just very inexpensive. Um, and from the brand of Moschino, especially if you've tried something like Toy Boy, that is such an amazing rose-based fragrance. I love that fragrance. And I think it came out in 2019 and I think it's one of the best releases of that year. So I know the brand Moschino has the ability to put out quality fragrances. I just think this is not it. I tried some of the flankers or the one that's in the pink bottle at least, and I wasn't a big fan of that one either, so I never purchased it. And this kind of was the end of the road as far as the fresh couture flankers are concerned. But in any case, I'm curious to know if you've tried it. And if you have, leave your comment down below. 
I and it, it looks like they even put artificial coloring in the bottle to give it this sort of a blue appearance. In any case, I'm not going to comment any more on that because I think they wanted to do something with the presentation and I think they succeeded in doing so. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, even if I wasn't that crazy, if I weren't that crazy about the smell, I could understand if it at least were unique, but I don't think it's unique either. I think it's something that's been done before. It's kind of plain, banal, nondescript. And it has a freshness to it, and it's an inoffensive DNA, just not something that I'm too crazy about, if I'm being honest. Longevity, it's an eau de toilette concentration, so the longevity on this one is like five to six hours. Projection was pretty good for the first half hour of application. It radiated at an arm's length. It became an elbow's length scent right around hour four, a skin scent right around hour five or six. In terms of the versatility, I think it's unisex. There's a lot of citrus and ambroxan happening in here that it could be masculine or feminine leaning. I think this one is great for casual scenarios. I wouldn't wear this during a formal scenario. And good for the hotter weather. Probably will appeal to somebody a little bit younger, especially as far as the presentation is concerned. And for the presentation, look, it's kitschy. Moschino does it. Paco Rabanne does it. Um, any number of brands are doing it nowadays. Even Versace to a degree. But again, they say it's the juice inside that counts. And in this case, is it juice or is it cleaning product? I'm not so sure. But my final verdict on this fragrance is, it's a likable scent. It's fresh, it's citrusy. It just doesn't do anything new. It's not unique. It's nothing that keeps you wanting coming back for more. And even if you do get this bottle as a gift or you purchase it yourself, once it's ran out, I don't see anybody consciously saying, I want to get that stuff again. I think it's it's an olfactory experience that we can put behind us and we can move on to bigger, brighter, and better smelling things. Hey, thank you for watching Fresh Couture by Moschino. Do you own this fragrance? If you do, I'm curious. <laughs> Drop your comments down below. I love the interaction. Also, if you took something of value from today's episode, let me know. It would mean a lot to me. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, give this video a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. We'll see you tomorrow with a new episode. Bye.